What's up guys, it's JHB Gaming here, and today we have the third episode of our Grimsby Town Road to Glory. And to start this episode off, we're going to be looking at our board objectives, and we have a high financial objective, so that will change how we approach this season. Looking at the squad, we currently only have 21 players, so we will definitely have to bring in more players by any means possible. To bring in those players, I've decided to fully invest in our youth academy, as I have bought a 4-star, 5-star scout who will be going to Scotland to find some defenders. We also still have our 2-star, 3-star scout who will be going to the Republic of Ireland to find some strong players. And I sent our 4-star, 3-star scout to Northern Ireland to find some attackers. Looking at the team overall, we are now a 1.5-star team as we have a 65-rated offense, a 65-rated midfield, and a 62-rated defense. For this season, we will be lining up in this 4-4-2. We'll have McCown in goal. We'll have Hendry at right back, Staunton and Pollock at center back, with Rafferty at left back. We'll have Lancaster at right mid, Hessenthaler and Sibley at center mids, with Burnham at left mid, with Giovacini and Vertanian up top. In the preseason tournament, we did end up getting knocked out in the group stage, as it did not go as well as we would have liked it. However, we are just going to get stronger as a team. The worst part of the preseason tournament is that Luke Waterfall ended up tearing his MCL and he's going to be out for two months. He is not a starter, however, he was a very good backup to have for us, and we also might not be able to sell him, possibly, because of this injury. In the first month of our youth scouting, we have gotten a player back, and it is Dave Stewart. He is a right back with a potential of 70 to 94, and we will be promoting him to the first team to be a quality backup. The next player that I am going to be promoting is Mark Lynch. He is a center mid. He is a 57 overall, and he's a potential of 71 to 94. He also has a five-star weak foot, which is something that is very good, especially for a central player. Pierce Cavanaugh is the next player we are attacking. He is a offensive-minded center mid. He is currently only a 46 overall. However, he has a potential of 71 to 94, and we will promote him and look to loan him out. The next player that I'm promoting is Jason O'Neill. He is a 48 overall left back. He has a potential of 75 to 94, and like Kavanaugh, we will be looking to loan him out. We currently only have three players who are transfer listed, as last season we were not able to get rid of James Hansen, as we will look to get rid of him again by selling him, and we will be looking to loan out Kavanaugh and O'Neill. For the, our first game that we will be covering this season, we have the Carabao Cup as we travel to Liberty Stadium to face Swansea. Swansea will be lining up in a 4-2-3-1. The biggest player we'll have to watch out for is Asoro, as he is a young, promising striker who has most likely grown by now. We will be lining up in our 4-4-2 as we put out our strongest 11. In the third minute, Vertanen backheels the ball into Giovacini, who gets in behind the defense and then puts it past the keeper to put us up 1-0 very early in the game. In the 67th minute, Giovacini is able to turn his defender for his one-on-one -on -one with the keeper, and he puts it into the side netting to put us now up 2-0. In the 82nd minute, Vertanen is able to win the long ball for his one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. He collects himself and then puts it past the keeper as we go up 3-0. At full time, we would go on to beat Swansea City 3-0 as we knock him out of the Carabao Cup with goals from Giovacini and Vertanen. We were able to loan out Pierce Kavanaugh, as he will be going to Burton and Albion for two years. We were also able to loan out Jason O'Neill for two years to German side Cheminser FC. We now host QPR in the second round of the Carabao Cup. We have again not made any changes to our starting lineup, as we have been doing well so far. QPR will be lining up in a 4-2-3-1. The player that we will probably have to watch out for is Chair, their attacking mid. In the 27th minute, Giovacini is able to dribble past the defender before he uses his speed and strength to get in behind and put the ball into the back of the net to put us up 1-0. In the 47th minute, QPR have the ball in the edge of our box. A runner gets free before he puts it near post Paxton McCohen to tie the game up at 1-1. At full time, we would be tied at 1-1, to -1, as we will now go into penalties. For our penalty order, we will have Giovacini going first, then Lancaster, then Bertanen, then Hansen, then Vernum, then Hessenthaler, then Rafferty. Giovacini steps up first for us, as he looks to put it in the bottom right corner. 
he sends the keeper the wrong way and converts his penalty. Their QPR's player now steps up. He sends McCohen the wrong way and also converts his penalty. Lancaster now steps up to take his penalty as we look to put it bottom left. He also sends the keeper the wrong way and see so he converts his penalty. Their stri QPR striker now steps up. He sends McCohen the wrong way, however, he hits the post. Vertanian now steps up and he sends the keeper the wrong way to convert our third penalty. Jeff Cameron now steps up for QPR and McCohen is able to make the save. Hansen now steps up as he has a chance to win the game. As we look to put it in the top left corner. And we are not able to convert that penalty, meaning that now McCowan will be able to make the save to knock QPR out of the Carabao Cup as well as advance us. Their player steps up and he shoots the ball wide as we knock QPR out of the Carabao Cup on penalties 3-1. to one. At full time, we would knock QPR out of the Carabao Cup as a goal from Gio Tini in the 28th minute and a goal from Duke McKenna in the 48th minute meant we had to go to penalties, which we were able to win 3-1. to one. We now host Southend in the league. We have not made any changes to the starting lineup from that game against QPR. Southend United will be lining up in a 4-1-4-1. This is a very defensive formation, so it should not be a high-scoring game. It definitely was not a high-scoring game, as it ended up being a 0-0 draw. In the second month of our youth scouting, one of our youth scouts was able to bring back Thomas Dillon. He is a 58 overall left winger with a potential of 72 to 94. We were able to sell Luke Waterfall to FC Vitorul for $330,000. We now travel to the Etihad Stadium to face Manchester City in the third round of the Carabao Cup. Manchester City will be lining up in a 4-3-3. They have a very, very good team, so we will need some cup magic if we are going to beat them. We have only made one change to our starting 11 as Evans is in goal for McCohen. In the 29th minute, Manchester City have the ball out wide. They then play it back to De Bruyne, who puts it past our goalkeeper to put Manchester City up 1-0. In the 36th minute, we have a corner. It is then crossed in, and Bertanen is able to get the header as we level the game at 1-1. One one. In the 41st minute, Manchester City have the ball on the edge of our box. We are unable to clear across before it falls to Aguero, who puts it into the back of the net to put Manchester City up 2-1. to one. In the 66th minute, Giovacini is able to play Vertanen in behind the defense. He is then able to put it past Ederson to tie the game at 2-2. Two two. In the 71st minute, Manchester City have the ball on the edge of our box. Is then able to be played into Thomas Partey, who puts the ball past Evans to put Manchester City up 3 to 2. In the 74th minute, Sibley ends up losing the ball, for it's then played into Manchester City's striker, who puts the ball into the back of the net to put Manchester City up 4 to 2 and possibly sealing the game. At full time, we would go on to lose Manchester City 4 to 2 as we get knocked out of the Carabao Cup, as goals from Vertanen just weren't enough as De Bruyne, Aguero, Partey, and another player were able to score. We now have to rebound after that loss against Manchester City in the Carabao Cup to face Bristol Rovers at the Memorial Stadium. Bristol Rovers will be lining up in a 5-3-2. This is a very defensive formation. However, since there are only two players out wide, we will definitely have to use our outside backs. We have not made any changes from our game against Manchester City. In the 6th minute, Lancaster has the ball in the box. He crosses it into Sibley, who volleys it into the back of the net to put us up 1-0 early in the game. In the 16th minute, Vernon has the ball out wide. He's then able to cross it into Giovacini, who heads the ball into the back of the net to put us up 2-0. Up in stoppage time of the first half, Giovacini plays Vertanen in behind the defense. He collects himself and puts it past the keeper to put us up now 3-0. In the 72nd minute, Giovacini is able to beat his defender before he's 1-1 with the keeper, curl it near post, and put us up 4-0. In the 86th minute, Giovacini has the ball out wide before he plays it into Vertanen, who curls it around the keeper to put us up 5-0. At full time, we would go on to beat Bristol Rovers 5-0, as Sibley was able to score 1 and Giovacini and Vertanen both scored 2. 
one of our youth scouts was able to bring back Rob Taylor. He is a striker who is a 60 overall and has a potential of 76 to 94. We now look at our players who have now become 60 overall so that we can see their potential. And Rob Taylor has potential to be special as he will definitely be a player that I will look to grow. Bradley Allen, our right back, is now showing great potential. Liam Evans, that goalkeeper that featured in the last couple of games, is showing great potential. Chris McMahon is showing great potential as well. Henry White, who is a defensive midfielder, is also showing great potential. Mark Lynch, that player that we promoted this season, is showing great potential. Thomas Dillon, another player that we promoted this season, is showing great potential. We now have a game in the Leasing.com trophy as we host Colchester in the area quarterfinal. The only change that we have made from the starting lineup is dropping Evans in favor of McCohen. Colchester will be lining up in a 4-2-3-1. The player that we'll have to watch out for is Brown, their attacking mid. In the 13th minute, Hendry gets bodied off the ball before it's crossed in to Brown, who heads the ball into the back of the net to put Colchester up 1-0. In the 24th minute, Lancaster has the ball out wide. He goes into Hessenthaler, who crosses it back post to Burnham, who puts the ball into the back of the net to tie the game at 1 1. In the 32nd minute, Lancaster has the ball out wide. He cuts back. He then shoots and is able to put it side netting to put us up 2 1. In stoppage time of the first half, Colchester has the ball out wide, is then crossed into their striker, who is unmarked, and puts the ball into the back of the net to tie the game up at 2 2. In the 73rd minute, Vertanen is in behind the defense. He is then able to put it past the keeper to put us up now 3-2. In the 90th minute, Colchester get the ball into our box. The player cuts back and then puts it near post, off the post, past McCohen to tie the game up at 3-3 in the dying minutes. At full time, we would tie 3-3, meaning that we will now go into penalties. Our penalty lineup will have Vernon going first, then Bertanen, then Lynch, then Sibley, then Taylor, then Hessenthaler, and then Rafferty. Vernon now steps up for the penalty as we look to put it in the bottom left. The keeper does not move as Vernon converts his penalty. Norris now steps up for Colchester. And McCohen is able to make the save with his legs. Bertanen, we look to put it in the right upper 90. We are, not able, to, we are able to do so as we convert the penalty. Giovanni Brown now steps up for Colchester, and he sends McCohen the wrong way as he converts his penalty. Lynch, our youth player, now steps up for us as we look to put it in the bottom left corner. We are not able to get it on target. The Colchester United player steps up, and he sends it over the top of the goal. Sibley now steps up for us as we look to put it bottom right. We are able to do so, meaning that now, if McCohen is able to save this penalty, we will knock Colchester out of the Leasing.com trophy. The player steps up and he goes for the dink, but he hits it over the goal as we advance on penalties. At full time, we would go on to win 3-3 as Vernon, Lancaster, and Vertanen scored for us before we went on to win 3-1 on penalties. After that win against Colchester in the Leasing.com trophy, we now travel to the New Meadow to face Shrewsbury. Shrewsbury will be lining up in a 5-3-2. This is a very defensive formation, so we will have to make the most of all the chances that we get. Since we have not lost a game with this starting lineup, we will be continuing to use it. In the 26th minute, Shrewsbury gets its ball in behind the defense before the player is able to volley it right up for 90 to put it past McCohen to put them up 1-0. In the 54th minute, Shrewsbury have the ball on the edge of our box. They're able to find their striker who puts it past McCohen to put them up 2-0. At full time, we would go on to lose to Shrewsbury 2-0 as Cummings and Udoa scored. We now have a chance for revenge as we face Shrewsbury in the FA Cup at the New Meadow. Shrewsbury will be lining up in the 5-3-2. They've made one change as Roland is in the center mid and he is the player we'll, we'll most likely have to watch out for. We have not made any changes to our starting lineup from that game against Shrewsbury. In the seventh minute, Hessenthaler wins the ball before he plays Vernum in behind the defense as he one touches it into the back of the net to put us up 1-0 early in the game. 
in the 18th minute, Shrewsbury Town are able to get their striker in behind the defense. McKellen makes the first save, however, their striker is able to score the rebound as they tie the game up at 1-1. In the 48th minute, Lancaster plays the ball into Giubicini, who plays it through to Vertanen, who puts the ball into the back of the net to put us up 2-1. At full time, we would get our revenge as we beat Shrewsbury 2-1 as Vertanen and Vernum scored. After knocking out Colchester in the area quarterfinal, we have made it to the area semifinal where we have been drawn against Luton Town. We now host Luton Town in the Leasing.com Trophy area semifinal. We have not made any changes to the starting lineup as we continue to line up in this 4-4-2. Luton Town will be lining up in a 4-1-2-1-2. We will definitely have to take advantage of our width as this formation lacks it. In the 43rd minute, Luton Town have the ball on the edge of our box. They're able to do a give and go around our center backs before their striker puts the ball into the back of the net to put them up 1-0. In the 54th minute, we have Vernum has the ball out wide. He then cuts it back to Sibley who puts the ball in off a defender to tie the game up at 1-1. In the 75th minute, Luton Town have a penalty. Their striker steps up and sends McCohen the wrong way as Luton Town go up now 2-1. In the stoppage time in the second half, Luton Town have the ball in our box. They then play it to their player, who puts the ball into the back of the net, sealing the game off at 3-1. At full time, we did unfortunately get knocked out of the Leasing.com trophy by Luton Town 3-1. Looking at the standings as we head into the month of January, we are 7th in the league with 46 points, just 2 points behind 6th place Fleetwood Town, who have 48 points, as I feel like this is a good position for us as we can make a push for the playoffs in the second half of the season. In the FA Cup, we have been drawn against Arsenal in the third round. In the Carabao Cup, we would get knocked out in the third round by Manchester City. In the Leasing.com Trophy, we were knocked out in the area semifinal by Luton Town 3-1. Thank you all for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have any comments or suggestions, leave them down in the comment. Like and subscribe. And it's J2B Gaming, signing off.